All right, so good afternoon, everybody. My name is Kevin Rebau, and I am Director of Student Achievement and Educational Technology at Aurora Public Schools. And so a little bit about my position is I have a team of, of coaches um, and an instructional coordinator, Joe Dillon, who you've met, uh, who work across the district, helping teachers like yourselves um, integrate technology in the classroom. Uh, the student achievement bit, I oversee APS Online High School and the principal at that school um, I supervise and so uh, I dig into online and blended learning as well. I also have a piece with library services and I also have a videographer um, who will be filming best practices this year. In fact, um, he will probably be uh, coming around to your classes this school year um, compiling video so that we can make a really cool video centered on the hard work that you've already begun these last three days and make it a realization um, with your students over the course of this year. So you'll get to know him too. His name's Brian. Um, so what I wanted to, to talk about today with you is, uh, is basically try to, you know, pass along my passion for what you're doing. Like I'm really, really, really excited and pumped that you have taken time out of your summer to come in and, and spend a significant amount of time learning how to make these video games um, with the, the realization that by you learning to do it, you can help your students learn to do it and find some passion in making the games and learn those important computational thinking skills and, and get interested in computer programming, which is so necessary in our society today. So, um, you know, great instruction always starts with the teacher and uh, I'm really looking forward to how you're going to be able to take your learnings from this three-day training that you're finishing up and be able to apply that in your classroom to, uh, to really get your, t your, your students excited about it and get them interested in a niche that we really, really have some deficits in in this country. Um, so with that being said, I have some, uh, um, I have some goals that I've thought about for, for all of you and, uh, and some, some pieces of this project and working with the University of Colorado and, and thinking through this. Um, that I'd like to share with you today. And one would be a goal that I have for all of you is that by the end of first quarter, you have a group of students who've, who've successfully completed making a game. By the end of first quarter. Is that reasonable? Does that seem doable to you guys? Mm -hmm. yeah. Good, I like that. It's kind of a, was it a, yeah! But, yeah. But based on, 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 on what you've learned. Yeah, a piece of cake. Oh, it's mellow, it's mellow, okay. But the important thing is that, um, you know, in order to help each of you find success with your students in your classroom, is it, what, what I believe is going to be instrumental is to be able to bring you together, you core teachers, I'm going to refer to you as the core, the core scalable game design teachers, bring you core teachers together and be able to share out what you're doing and how you're doing it in your classrooms, what's working, what isn't working. Um, where do you need support so that we build a community centered on scalable game design? Because the aim is to not just have little silos of excellence in some of our schools across Aurora, but to actually say, hey, we're a district, an entire district that is, is dedicated, invested, and in allowing an opportunity for all of our students to get a taste of computer programming, computational thinking via scalable game design. So basically the, the idea is, is You've already met one another and kind of worked together today um, for the last three days, but to keep keep this core together and to create one one thing that that will emerge over the course of this year is that we will create an online professional learning community where you guys will be able to 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 get into there and to be able to um, share out practice, to ask questions, to do all the things that make these online communities powerful. Um, for you to be able to take advantage of that. Also, I'm willing to invest in substitutes for you to occasionally take you out of your classrooms and bring you together face to face so that we can talk about what have you tried on, um, where have you found success, and where are you going, and give you some time to sit down and, and what you're going to do today, this afternoon, after I get done talking, but to sit down and, and continue with creating some lesson plans and be intentional about really integrating this into, into your teaching. Um, so, Online professional learning communities. I'll pay for your substitutes to bring you together so that we can work together on this. Um, and then also, um, you know, wh when I think about this, research, there's lots and lots of research that shows that if, if you 
if you, and we, we've all experienced this, I've definitely experienced this myself. If I go to a training and I learn a bunch of stuff, let's say in a day, and then I'm asked as a teacher to go back to my classroom and do something with it, and, and all I have really for that support was just that one training, there's about a 15% chance that I'm actually gonna do something with it. And the reason why it's so low is because sometimes it's really hard to like visualize, all right, I got all this stuff and it's great, I'm pumped, and I'm excited, I'm gonna do it. And then I get to the classroom and I'm ready to write a lesson plan and I've got kids coming in and I'm thinking like, all right, how are we gonna do this? And you start to, your mind starts to draw blanks. And you need models and you need to, 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 to try to, to do it, you know? And so it's tough to just build something off of like initial training like this. So don't think of today as the end of, of something with the University of Colorado and APS and with Google. It's just the beginning because we're gonna keep this going and we're gonna intentionally keep it going all year long and keep setting goals together as a team as far as integrating this into your instruction. So the other 85% um, you know, who, who do nothing with, with, uh, you know, with, with something when they learn it just in one day at a training, you know, we can't have that. So the way that we counteract that is in research shows is job embedded, ongoing, sustained professional learning. So I have a team of coaches and we have, we have Mark Scholdice here who is our, who, he's like one of our original pioneers of scalable game design in this district. And he's gonna be heading up facilitating, um, you know, online uh, professional learning community, um, helping us, and, you know, Ed Tech and Mark, you know, begin to help you integrate this into um, your classrooms. And I have a team of EdTech coaches who will be able to help you with this as well. Because we don't want to just, you know, close up shop today and say, you know what, that was really, really cool. I really liked it. I see the value in it. And we shelve it and it collects dust. Because we all know after, you know, playing around with this today, um, yesterday and on Wednesday, and seeing the compelling evidence, the data, and, and, and what, what, what this can do for our students, we got to keep it going. But we have to be intentional about it. And it all starts with all of us in, in this room working together, and I'm willing to invest um, my coaching support and invest in Mark Scholdice and put structures in place so that we can build this together to pioneer it. Because really the goal is, at the end of the day, is that you core teachers, you take this on and you work together and you begin to have, have pretty amazing models emerge from this. And, and we video that and we capture stories and we interview you and we interview more importantly your students and, and we get the, the news involved and we get the media involved. And like one, one thing that will happen at the end of uh, this, this year, not school year, but um, in December is, and help me remember what it's called, it's the... CS week. It's the what? Yes, yeah, the week, week the computer week long week. Yeah, computer week. computer science week. Computer science ed week. Computer science ed week. So here's another goal. In December, the beginning of December, before we break for you know towards the end of the month, is the computer science week. And at that time, and this this is how I sort of got and Joe got involved with this was Mark. Um, he participated in the computer science ed week um, this last December, and he had uh, his students showing the games that they designed. Not just to him so he could evaluate them, but they invited people from around the district, and more importantly, they invited community members, their parents and guardians and other family members and siblings. And there's a huge group of people who were able to go into Mark's lab and see the great work, and just to see the passion and, the, and how proud those students were to like show their work, we were able to talk to them about it. And I remember in my mind, um, one girl, she, uh, I was asking her about the game that she designed and everything. And I said, you know what, does this get you interested in, in, in programming or, or what, what elements did you like? I think was the question I asked. She said that she really liked the design. It got her way more interested in, you know, someday moving off and maybe learning Photoshop and Illustrator and other, other design type um, artistic programs. And though she may not stay in the computer science bit, it definitely got her pumped and something related in the industry that's useful for computer science, um, because there's so many different facets that it falls into, um, interested in something and giving her sort of like that, that light at the end of the tunnel, like, I want to work towards this. And that was really powerful to me. And you guys are going to see in your classrooms too. You'll see your students get engaged, they'll get pumped on this, and they're going to be learning, but they're going to be having fun too, which is such a cool thing. So my message is today, we're all in it together. I'm here to support you. My team is here to support you. 
that ongoing job embedded professional learning supports with you in your classroom to have somebody there at your side when possible to help make sure you know that you're feeling you're feeling okay and comfortable doing this because we can't shelve it after just a you know a three-day training we have to keep it going and if we lay down a really solid foundation which I'm confident we'll be able to do this year the models will emerge and other teachers other teachers who might have been kind of apprehensive because you guys are the risk takers you're here you're taking the risk and you're like oh, I see something in this let's get the other ones who are kind of like eh. I'm kind of too scared to do this, or how is this going to fit into what I'm going to do? They're going to see you, they're going to be inspired by you and your students. And then it will start to spread. One other thing I'd like to mention as far as like institutionalizing this in our school district is that, I mean, we've all heard pathways. Our former superintendent, John Barry, would always talk about pathways and the idea that we're providing our students with, you know, opportunities to make choices in what they're interested in and get, 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 excited about school because it's relevant so that they want to go to college and they can, you know, get involved with things that, that, that they're interested in and be productive citizens, right? So we, we're all familiar with the pathways. Well, the STEM pathway, science, technology, engineering, and math, the technology bit, you know, it, it's not that it's, it's weak, but there's so much opportunity in the technology bit of the STEM pathway for something like this to be able to to be a part of that and to start to make it stronger and provide examples of, of where you know technology and computer science fits within the STEM pathway. So what my department and what I'm working on in collaboration with our directors, of, uh, our director of STEM pathway, is talking about creating a computer science pathway where even elementary school kids, when when they're just first um, you know accessing the uh, computer science, they're just beginning to learn about it. Like they play little games, they sort of see that to middle school students who are well, you know, even late elementary beginning to make games. The middle school students making games. The high school students now have the classes, the electives and the computer science courses that help them to make games and get interested in all elements that fall into that. Whether it's the business of selling a game or it's the design and the art or the storytelling of making a game. But then even more importantly, getting those more advanced students to move into making simulations and models that can actually be used like in an economics class because they're doing a, some sort of like fiscal forecast or in the science class where they're you know making a model of a pandemic or something like that, right? I mean, that, that's, that's really cool. And so we want to have that pipeline. I remember on the first day when I was here, Alex had his picture up with the pipe and it was broken because, you know, we, we kind of do this here and there and then it kind of fizzles and then we wonder why at university, why don't we have, you know, many students of color? Why don't we have girls? Why do we have like certain, you know, certain types of, of boys who are interested in this and maybe the numbers aren't as big as they could be? You know, what do we do about that? Because we, we are the people who are, who are preparing the students for finding that success in college, you know. So um, my point is with all that, we're beginning to work on institutionalizing this into the pathway and creating that computer science pathway where this is a part of that, and it's a big part of that. And so our partnership with the University of Colorado and, and, and then also the graciousness of Google and this research um, that's, that's happening and sharing that data with National Science Foundation, this is big stuff, and it's awesome. And it's unique because there isn't there. I don't know. Correct me if I'm wrong. But there's other districts who are trying to do this at a district scale. I mean, are there many? Not really. So you are the pioneers, and I'm really excited. And I'm I'm investing in you, and I'm investing in this district for us to be able to take this on and to find success with it. So we're going to do whatever it takes to help keep this going. Let's keep this momentum going. All right. Um, and really be pioneers because your hard work is, is gonna, it's gonna be amazing to, to show the stories that are happening here and get other districts around our country pumped on this to get more students, more people interested in computer science and getting the good jobs that we need to have them have within our country, um, which we all, we all know about that philosophy and understand why. You know? So um, with all that being said, uh, does anybody have questions for me from like a ed tech standpoint or you know what I just kind of threw out at you? Uh, any comments? What do you guys think? Is this doable? Yeah. Um, um, you know, and I'm looking at this whole pathway thing and, and the, 
the STEM. And, you know, we are involved right now with the pathway for the arts and design. And we run into obstacles with that. And then they're wanting us to institutionalize it. And that means you have to have a master's and you have to do blah, blah, blah. How does that fit if we open up a science, you know, a STEM at the high school level? Neither one of us have that. That's OK. And here's the reason why. You don't necessarily have to have the STEM pathway to be able to take on with the scalable game design in like the classes that you guys teach, right? right. So you're talking about like um, arts and communication and that pathway already exists at Hinkley. And so you could say, you know what, as far as like the, the arts bit, I mean, were there artistic elements in what you've done over the last right, two years? Right. Yeah? So we can begin to tie it in. It's just like the idea is that the scalable game design does not not have to only reside in, let's say, a computer science a technology, a STEM pathway. So we can, it can throw it into fit. that one? It can fit in all so many different places. Yes, okay. you definitely and want to put that into there. And the other thing that, that comes to mind is we have noticed, and you know our obstacles anyway, like with the film production and how that pathway just went away when the person went away. Yeah. So would that, is that still something that would happen? You know, would it go away if the person goes away? Yeah. That is the sustainability thing. And so that's what I was uh, uh, attempting to speak to today is when I, when I, when I speak about like institutionalizing something, yeah. um, I don't mean that from a sense that, because that, it sounds like you've heard that word before, but it may have been used in a different way that I might be using that. You have to have a master's and, and whatever, right? What I mean by that is that we are creating something within our district that no matter who comes in or out of our system, whether it's students or it's adults who are teaching, it's fluid in that, that it is there, and it doesn't matter if you leave or if you come in new, it is there, and it's, it's sustained, and it's, it's, it's district-wide. We're providing this opportunity, this great opportunity, for all of our students to be able to take advantage of. So that's what I mean by institutionalizing. Can I make a comment? Sure. Uh, Stateability comes with leadership, and I'm, I'm from Denver, I don't know your title, but to hear you talk, you seem like you're a leader <laughs> here in uh, Aurora. So my estimation, it, it starts with leadership. And so once leadership gets in tune with it, then it's like that Lee Iacocca thing. Lee Iacocca was great with Chrysler. As soon as he left, it plummeted. But it sounds like he, he's trying to get it ingrained within your district. So no matter if he was to leave or someone else leave, it's the foundation has been built. I mean, does that help? That, yeah. I'm glad that you said it because, yeah, it, we've experienced it in this district. Right. Like, Mark, you were the pioneer. You probably heard stories about how there's other teachers involved with it, and, and then they leave or other life circumstances right. happen, and then it fizzles out, right? right. Yeah, we, so that's, that's, this, that's this new pioneering piece of what we're doing. It's not just you taking on new learnings and integrating something really awesome for students into your classrooms. But it's also, we're laying the foundation in order to create something amazing within a district and really be able to then use that as a model that other districts can look at the research that we're conducting with the University of Colorado and being able to say, hey, here's a viable model and we want to replicate that as well. Because it's been successful in the classrooms. You have those like silos of excellence at certain schools. It's not good enough. We need to be bigger. We gotta, scale, scalable game design. So that's the aim. So the other piece that you guys should know, I mean, you know, the reason why this partnership is really powerful is because we have been an underground movement for five years. <clears throat> Mark has not had any support from a district level for five years. It's just this year, his fifth year, is when he finally got, got recognized and supported. In the meantime, our project has been creating some infrastructure like hiring me, a professional, to be in the job of coordinating and being logistics and, and, and really creating stability, someone that can create systems. That's where I come from. We went from PD 25% implementation. We're at 80% of scholars whom we train in PD go in and do at least one game, if not more, mostly more. Those numbers are unheard of in the research unit. And so we're bringing that support to each of you. 
And we have always had that support for all of our scholars. So even when things change and we all have to be fluid, well, it's not like you're just dependent on Kevin and Joe and the tech team administrative-wise at APS. You always have us. Yeah, so, that's important because this is a partnership good. with APS and with the University of Colorado. And a partnership is, is, is not just giving or not just taking. I mean, it's, we're working together synergistically and doing amazing things together side by side. So, you know, when I think about like the sustainability, um, again, is that when, when I was referring to the, the online professional learning communities, um, we already have some collaboration that's happened because of Late Start Wednesdays um, this last year with K-8 middle schools, um, where we brought tech teachers together. Lois and Mary Beth were a part of that. Um, and, uh, you know, working with our ed tech coaches, creating a digital footprint that's lasting a wiki has emerged, mm -hmm. and teachers are beginning to put upload their uh, lesson plans, excuse me, into it. We're able to break it up by grade level and start to create like kind of a, a, a curriculum guide for teachers so that, that if you're new to the position and you move in, you've got the resources to help you get started. And if you're someone who's been doing it for a while, you've got new ideas that maybe you didn't think of, and there's supports that are built into that community. So that's part of our work as well this year. I, I just want to reiterate, you know, how important it is to think about sustainability because as far as I understand, and this project you know, it, it is supported uh, specifically by, by Google and, and they've uh, supported many projects like this around the world. So this is actually an international program, the CS4HS uh, program, but in almost all the places they were, there were universities inviting teachers from various schools coming together, you know, getting very excited and then, you know, sort of random schools, random teachers going back to their random schools again and then lost track and, and, and things did get shelved and this is the first time that, you know, Google says, well, we're not completely excited about this, but, you know, it, it is clear that the teachers like what's happening, but then they go back to their schools and their districts aren't really involved to the degree that we like them to be involved in and then these things just fizzle out because you know, a person does get retired and boom, there, there goes that effort. And, and this is the first time that the district actually is a board, so this is a very focused project that really says the district will support you. And so if things are really going wrong in your classroom, if you think, oh, this is not going to work or, you know, I would need to have this or that, don't, don't just give up. Please do come to us and say, you know, I'm not sure I can do this because ABC, and, and that, that's actually part of our research. We really want to know, even if in the end you conclude I can't do this, we want to know why. And so we need to figure out what are the obstacles, what, what do we need to do, what, how does your district need to help you to make this happen? We are part of an experiment. So there is no failure, there's only discovery. And sometimes that helps to get the pressure off your shoulders and your kids' shoulders too. Anything you do is a learning process for all of us. It adds to the data stream. It's very important. What doesn't work is just or sometimes even more important than what is working. It's learning. I just want to say, too, Lois and I got involved because we were at professional development with Mark. I'm a K-8, they're middle schools. Um, but our principals supported us going to the other professional development. Um, so if you can communicate to that mid-level, to our principals and so forth, that we need to all get together, not depending on what grade level we're at, but what support we need, that's really helpful. It's a great point, Mary Beth. I'm glad you mentioned it. And, and Mark, yeah, I didn't mean to leave you out of the loop as far as like the late start Wednesdays because Mark was facilitating this work. Um, but yeah, it, it really, it, and, and I'm sorry, the gentleman in the back who made the comment, um, Ron. Ron, thank you. Ron. Ron. From DPS. <laughs> From DPS. <laughs> points out, it, it is. It, it does, the, these sorts of things do start with leadership. And, and I'm telling you right now, I'm committed and I'm, in, I'm making investments into this. And I did communicate with principals, and that's why we were able to make that happen. Yeah. And I won't cease communicating with the principals and help them. And I think what really sells this type of stuff, you guys, is when the models emerge. When there's a video that shows like students talking about it and a teacher showing their passion around something like this, when um, you're able to speak to 
data that shows that engagement is increased, not just for one group of students, but for all of the students. When you begin to see these successes and share them, it starts to hit this critical mass, and those people who are on the fence or who are unsure, or, you know, they, they get excited about it, and they're like, you know what, we want to join you on this journey. Because not everyone starts the journey at the beginning. You guys are the ones who are with the machete slashing through the jungle. There's going to be people who are going to follow and create those ruts behind you, because you guys are slashing. So we'll do it, and I'm committed, and I'm just, I, I, I think that your presence here for the last three days in the middle of the summer when you have time off is ind indicative of your commitment as well, and I appreciate that. So, okay. Thank you for your support. From the uh, scalable game design team uh, uh, side of the situation, you mentioned having a, a core team of tech support for the teachers. What can we do to support that team? I mean, here we were training or working with the t individual teachers, but we need to provide a different kind of support for your tech people. And there's a you know, there's a, a two-way street for that because we want to scale up you know, in the rest of the country can't do it ourselves. So we'd like to learn the techniques of what we have to do to support your core team type of situation. And I don't know if you're getting that much thought, but we need to do that. I think, Joe, <clears throat> I want to tag on to a couple of the points that were already made. I think one of the things that was, was excellent last year that was really fun to watch was um, Mark's enthusiasm sharing his work in the classroom. And then the <clears throat> teachers who were already invited to collaborate with him, they're it was their request to learn more about this. It wasn't something that we pushed to them. And um, you know, whether it was Kevin or myself, and a lot of times it was me who followed up with the principals and said, oh, by the way, we are, we are inviting teachers to these trainings. This is why they're leaving your building for eight hours a day. And, uh, and I would say in every case, the principal was excited, but it's a real win for a principal when somebody says, hey, I left the building for an eight hour day and it was such a positive learning experience. As you can imagine, people probably forget to tell their principal when it's a great learning experience and they only remember when facilitators were unprepared or if something didn't work right. So I would just encourage you because we absolutely will follow up with your principals and thank, thank you through that, through them for your time, mm -hmm. but also do APS a favor and remind your principal that you got to come to a great training and that it was, you know, it was a powerful learning experience because it lifts their day. But I think to your point, Fred, then it also, starts to initiate some, you know, how do we help this message become a different, a district level message? If we start to capture questions from administrators, specifically about this work leaving the computer lab and becoming simulations in other schools, I think that's the point where we, we would have to start thinking, you know, because there are more questions than just Mary Best questions for Mark when she gets a little stuck mm -hmm. in the third game. And I think that when we start to, to work our way out of the computer lab and into other STEM classrooms, um, questions will come from other stakeholders, and we'd like to kind of capture those questions as we go. So, and I think that's a great place for us to use your team as a resource. And we'll have to build capacity within our, our ed tech coaches as well, because they, they have many tools in their, in their utility belt, and scalable game design is gonna be another one. Will they be well enough versed to be able to you know, create games on their own? Not necessarily, but can they successfully coach a, a teacher in, and help facilitate planning of using scalable game design in their instruction and to be able to reflect on that and find the positives and be able to build on that and affect student achievement? By all means, yes. So yeah, we have been thinking about this and over time we're, we're you know, we kind of have the map, but we're going to have to actually like go over the hills and through the valleys and sort of figure out you know, what does this exactly look like? But we really appreciate the fact that, that you know, University of Colorado is in partnership with us to help us think through this together and provide support to one another. Well, I'm really excited, guys, and I hope you are too. And, you know, usually after like three day, like a three day training is the end, people are like, <laughs> on the floor, but you guys are, you, you, you still? No, they got work to do. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> chop, chop. So I don't want to take you away from your work, but I, I hope that you, uh, you know, that, that you're, you're kind of pumped on this. And, uh, you know, it's natural to feel nervous about this, you know, but hey, you're not alone. That's what I can tell you right now is you're not alone. And we're going to work together and um, we're going to invest the resources in what we need to do to help you and more importantly, your students find success. So thanks, you guys. Thank you. Thank you.